everyone, Tony Winston here for Jazz Piano College. And, uh, you know, my latest kick now is going to be Stride Piano. And I've made a few videos, but I haven't put any of them up because my playing is just because I haven't played any Stride Piano in years and years. And even when I did play it a little bit, I wasn't that great at it even back then. So back when I used to play restaurant gigs, I had a few songs that I kind of did stride with. I even learned uh, Fat Swaller's Handful of Keys. Some of the problems I've had with stride piano, not being able to think fast enough. A bad left hand, you know, I injured my, my I cut a nerve in a artery and a tendon. Uh, back uh, when I was in the fifth grade. And so I don't have a lot of feeling in my fifth finger. And so I always played stride like this. I would put my third finger down there and, and play it like this. Because I can feel in that finger, it's the fourth and the fifth that I don't do so well. But this is not the way to go. And, you know, since then, I've really kind of changed my style. And, you know, whenever I do Chopin waltzes, you know, I'm careful to use my pinky most of the time. I've also discovered that you don't really need to have, you know, great feeling in your fingers. It helps, of course, because as, as you move down, you can kind of feel where the black keys are and then hit the bass note. Um, but you, you also have a sense, one of your five senses. It's actually... Oh, maybe a sixth or a seventh sense of kind of knowing where you are in space. Like if you can close your eyes and just touch your fingers together, it's because you, you can tell where your hands are. And it's the same with piano too. I'm a pretty good improviser when I'm doing like left hand rootless voicings and stuff like that. If I was going to play this song, nice work if you can get it, and just use rootless voicings. You know, I wouldn't have any problem at all because my left hand is kind of on automatic pilot. You know, I mean, I, I've done this kind of stuff for so long that, you know, don't even think about it. However, if you're trying to do, and you, you know, this is kind of an easy stride, right? It's not like, you know, hitting a tenth and a big chord or something like that. It's just playing the bass note and then the third and the seventh and then like every other one is going to be like just a chord, you know, right under your finger. So it shouldn't be too hard. So I would like to get that under automatic pilot. Now, another reason I, I picked this particular song to work on, I think we can borrow some of Art Tatum's cool riffs in this song. For one thing, when we land on that A seventh chord, um, he has a two-finger riff that kind of goes like this. Uh, and I think this, the way most people think that Art did it was with two, one and two, like this. All right. But I like to do it more with three. Though, honestly, I think I'm still more accurate with two, so I don't know exactly what I'm going to practice there. A another possibility would be this. That's kind of a nice sound there, too. And when Art would do these, Art Tatum, when he would do these, you know, quick runs like this, he would always have his left hand, like, set to hit whatever the chord that he was going to. So I'm doing A seventh here. And, and I, I want my left hand to be ready there, so. Now, another problem I was having with this song was, is my own sense of what the harmony of this song was. I was making it way too complicated. Um, you know, I had this, I was trying to go. And then a three, six, two, five, one. And, you know, I struggled and struggled trying to get a good flow of chords there. And then, you know, when all else fails, I actually put on Art Tatum's recording of it and realized that it's not that at all. It's just a G major. And then what Art does is goes to an A minor and a D7. So it's kind of like a... That's one of the little riffs that he plays, something like... And then, instead of a three, six, two, five, one, which I was always doing, and I, I will do it again, but the change is just a two, five, one. 
And the reason you want to kind of start with a bare bones uh, harmonic scheme is so that you can add stuff to it. If it's already really complicated, you know, you're stuck trying to hit all those changes. But if it's something simple, like a 251, you know, then you can put in like, you know, you can do uh, like cool kind of bluesy changes like. So the basic harmonic scheme is going to be, uh, we start on the three chord. thing Art Tatum likes to do is use really like sharp 11th chords though I don't think he ever thought in terms of a sharp 11 he may have but um, I mean his harmony was pretty advanced and he was definitely ahead of his time so I'm not going to say that he just thought of it as a flat five like everybody else was doing but you know when I really analyze this harmony I kind of think that's where he's coming from so so you could use chords like this See, all these are like sharp 11 chords. And then you can go A. And a possible diminished chord coming back up to the G. And then... Okay, and then we go through that again. Most people, you know, can't reach tenths comfortably. Like we could go to the E minor here in the bridge by going something like that, or even this could be a B seventh chord. You know, you might think, well, that's like the F sharp minor, but you know, if you're in G and you go down here, it could be D, it could be B seven, it could be F sharp minor, it could be F sharp minor seven flat five. You know, lots of these intervals have more than one function. So, but. To avoid the tenth, you can do a six like this. See? All right, that's pretty nice. And what is that? You know, if I if I transposed it, it's a third, and then if I did that, it's a it's a tenth. So a sixth is very much like a tenth. And then we get into the bridge. Now here in the bridge. We hit another great chord, C seventh, and you know there's there's a nice two finger run for this as well, and uh, it, here here it is. And once again, I'm using three one, but uh, a lot of people I think would use two one, maybe three one, two one, three one. You know, you just got to experiment and uh, try to find the one that you can do the fastest. No, three, two, that was two, here's three. See, two is more accurate, kind of. So, in the bridge. And you know, a lot of times he'll start off with a little chromatic thing or some, some little thing before he gets going into it. And, and then you wanna be able to hit back to the E minor chord again. So let's see how this is gonna work. So I was ready there. However, if you can't reach a tenth, then you've got to be ready with a chord or something like that. So. Here on the E minor 7 flat 5, you see the same riff works. 
And then here, you know, I, I once again, my harmonic analysis was wrong. It's just a D7 there. Like that. I always went to an F sharp because that's the dominant that takes you back to the B again. But it's not that way in the chart. And uh, I did steal an Art Tatum thing here where he goes like, you know, just walks up. Now these are minor tenths, every one of them, except for the first one. So if you can reach them, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's possible if, you know, if your hands are big enough. Now, very few people can hit like the D flat F. Tenth. And of course, you know, Art could put these notes in between and play like whole chords, like, you know, that kind of stuff he could do with one hand easily. All right. We can't do that. Most of us can't. So uh, once again, in the bridge. I'll say this too about this style and it's supposedly Art Tatum could reproduce some of his recordings practically note for note and there's a lot of notes there so you do want to work out what you're going to do you can't totally you sh probably shouldn't totally rely completely on improvisation um, one person I took a few lessons from years ago a guy named John Redfield who uh, lives down in Florida and he's a you know he's a great uh, piano player and can play in the style of Art Tatum um, it told me, he, he told me that, you know, you should work out your left hand in advance, <laughs> you know, get, get your ideas completely worked out. You could have a few variations on it and things, but w you know, work that out. And, uh, and another thing too is, is don't stick, you know, don't stick to this for too long. I mean, if you're playing in the style of Fats Waller, you know, it goes on a lot longer in his style, but once you get to like, you know, the more modern players, uh, Art Tatum, and uh, let me mention a few others too. Uh, Johnny Costa, who was the uh, piano player for Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, an unbelievably great piano player. Um, Oscar Peterson, um, Dick Wellstood, um, Dave McKenna. And, you know, there's probably a lot more. Oh, oh and there's another guy too that's put out some videos on uh, YouTube uh, about 10 years ago actually that talks about the two finger runs and how to style the left hand and that and I'm going to link to some of his videos for you. Oh, uh, Judy Carmichael is another one. I'm friends with her on Facebook and I used to have her book but I can't find it. Um, so if I can find it I'll share some of that with you. One thing about this channel is is I like to provide people with resources that they can you know find uh, information that they're looking for. That's why I talk about other other uh, channels sometimes. You know, Open Studio is a, is a good channel with Peter Martin and Adam Manis. Um, uh, Christian from Berlin is a good one for, you know, blues and boogie woogie. And Dr. K, Brendan Kavanaugh is great. And there's another guy too, I, I don't know how to say his name, is a young guy who can play all kinds of boogie woogie styles, which is also a part of this style as well. So, so much more to come, I'm sure, as we uh, continue to cover this topic. And I hope, hopefully I'll you know, pull some of my own arrangements together and be able to play a chorus or two of some of these songs. Some of the other songs I'm going to cover, Lady Be Good, Honeysuckle Rose, Ain't Misbehavin', uh, some of the classic stride songs. And uh, there's just, you know, just about any song can be worked into this style. All right, folks, thank you very much. Uh, big, big shout out to some of my folks over there on Patreon. Really came through for me last month. It's so surprising in the midst of this pandemic that I would get such a, a good uh, amount of contribution. So thank you very much. And uh, I'll see you all again real soon.